The Oxford Fertility Unit is one of the foremost centres of excellence for fertility treatment and reproductive medicine in the UK. The unit is very proud to have assisted in the conception of over 5,000 babies since being founded in 1985. Today, the unit is at the forefront of this rapidly advancing area of medical science. So the Oxford Fertility Unit is um, within the new Institute of Reproductive Sciences in the Oxford Business Park North and the um, IRS houses the Oxford Fertility Unit uh, but also the University of Oxford um, Nuffield Department Research Laboratories and also a company called ReproGenetics that does genetic testing uh, on embryos. So there's three of us housed within the IRS building. The two directors of uh, Oxford Fertility Unit, myself and uh, Ender McVeigh, are both um, University of Oxford consultants in reproductive medicine. Um, one in seven couples have problems conceiving and many of those couples uh, require assisted conception treatments that we offer here in, in, the, in the Oxford Fertility Unit. So our patients come from all backgrounds uh, and with all different causes of infertility. Couples um, are genuinely referred to us by their own gynaecologist um, who has made the diagnosis of infertility, usually got a reason why the couple aren't conceiving and uh, they feel that the most appropriate measure based on evidence base is to carry on with IVF. These couples will then attend to us. We may find other pathology present at that time because things may have changed from when the couple were initially referred or diagnosed to the time that they actually present to us. This, this is not a place where I'm sure most people want to be, but um, I think initially the patient's understanding as much as possible about IVF, understanding the processes that are going on, demystifying the IVF uh, to a certain degree, um, which we do through patient information evenings through having visible access into our laboratories, through our website-based education. So let them understand that they feel that they're doing the treatment along with us as opposed to us doing the treatment to them. So once we receive a referral, we then contact the patient and invite them to come to what we call an evening meeting, which is an information giving session. It lasts about an hour or so, and we go through in a lot of detail with them and other couples all the steps from that point all the way through until the pregnancy test. From there, in general, the couple uh, will be invited back for two other appointments. One would be a detailed sperm test in the IVF unit, and the second would be what we call a consent appointment, which is when we go through all of the steps and the legal consent forms, uh, pick up any outstanding blood tests that might need to be performed, perform a, an ultrasound scan, and also a trial embryo transfer, usually all within one appointment, which means that following that, the couple should then be ready to phone and start their IVF treatment. So most couples coming through would be having uh, in vitro fertilisation or IVF. So uh, the IVF treatment itself, once a couple starts, then the woman starts to sniff a drug from day 21 of her cycle and that switches her ovaries off. After two or three weeks of sniffing, she comes in for a blood test where we look to see that her ovaries are switched off. If they are switched off, she then goes on to the second stage of treatment, which is a daily injection given into the skin with a very simple pen device. And she takes that daily injection for about 10 to 14 days. And during that time, we'll come here for one or two scans and blood tests so that we can see how her ovaries are responding. Once we see there's a good number of follicles there, she then moves on to the egg collection. They have their own room allocated to them on the day of the egg collection, which they'll be in beforehand. And uh, after recovery, we'll be back into that room. That's their room for the day, which gives a high level of privacy. We also have a complementary therapy room so couples can uh, have acupuncture or any complementary therapy they like, uh, a separate counselling room and really just the, the sort of hotel facilities side of the, um, of the, uh, of the Oxford Facility Unit are, are absolutely world class. Hello, good morning. Good morning, hello. I am Dr. Ahmed, I'm one of the doctors here. How are you doing today? When they come in they would, we would meet them, we would take a brief history, introduce ourselves. We'd want to know a little bit about their experiences with anaesthetics in the past general state of health, any medicines they might be taking, any allergies you might have. Um, we then go to the egg collection room. Um, the first part of what I'd need to do is I'd need to put a small cannula into the a drip, if you like, into the back of the hand and we get you to breathe a little bit of oxygen. That's routine practice for whenever you're having sedation. We then use a combination of painkillers and sedatives given into the vein to make things a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more pleasant. 
There'll be a number of people in the room with us. Um, my job is to give the sedation. That's my only job. I concentrate purely on that and nothing else. Uh, one of the doctors from the fertility team will be actually retrieving the eggs, doing the procedure that, that involves, uh, and he has a trained nurse to assist him. Just enter the first follicle, just taking the fluid out of the follicle. And we pop the needle into both of the ovaries and drain the fluid out. And within the fluid, we find eggs. Um, on that day, uh, the partner would give us a sperm sample or we would use donor sperm if that was the treatment. And then just press the buzzer to the left there and then free to leave. OK. Thank you. So what the doctors will do is uh, pass through the fluid that they've got from the ovaries into uh, these hot blocks here. So all of this is being maintained at body temperature. What we then do is take the fluid that they have taken from the ovaries and pour it into a dish here and have a look at it under the microscope to identify the eggs. Um, what we would then do is, using a sterile glass pipette, we would then pop it into a dish, into the incubator here, and uh, uh, then let the doctors know that we have obtained an egg. Everything on this side, uh, within the IVF laboratory, it's sterile conditions, so the air quality is um, very high, so we're we're taking away any risk of contamination. So everything is at 37 degrees, which is body temperature, and therefore the eggs are being maintained in the state that they would normally be in in the body. Similarly, when they then go into the incubators, that environment within the incubator is the same as they would experience when, when they're in the female body. So once we've performed the uh, egg collection, then the embryologists check the eggs to make sure they look okay and we'll mix the eggs and the sperm together, and that's called standard insemination, or standard IVF. Um, we need about 100,000 sperm per egg, so you can see that the man actually needs to have pretty normal levels of sperm for us to do routine insemination during IVF. Once the sperm has been put with the, with the eggs, uh, the, we then leave them overnight in an incubator. We then grow the embryos on for between two and five days, and once we know which are the best one or two embryos to go back, we then perform an embryo transfer, which is a procedure very like a smear test. It just takes 10 minutes or so. And after that time, the woman then has to wait for up to two weeks for her pregnancy test result. Um, after we've done the embryo transfer, about a third to a half of couples will have spare embryos left over that are good enough quality for us to freeze. And we can keep them frozen for years. And that means the couple can come back and use those embryos without having to go through all of the steps I've just told you about. But in addition to that, we can perform intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. Uh, we're the only clinic in the country performing a treatment called in vitro maturation, or IVM. We also perform donor insemination treatment uh, and intrauterine insemination, which is IUI. So we really offer all of the um, assisted conception treatments, plus a few more. This year, we've begun offering pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, which is also called PGD which is where we actually biopsy embryos and look to see whether the embryos themselves have any genetic abnormalities. The Institute of Reproductive Sciences also houses the MSc course in clinical embryology. This is a one-year full-time residential course run by the University of Oxford. Dr. Lee Lim joined the Oxford Fertility Unit in the year 2000. It's fantastic. It's, it's, it's a unit that not just uh, looking after patients' existing uh, fertility problem, but also see couple as a whole and guide them through the physical side, the medical side, the emotional side, as well as the welfare of the child uh, uh, through the whole process of the treatment. Talking about being uh, for students, I, I was a student myself uh, before. I worked as, as a doctor for, for uh, three years after I graduated in Oxford. Then with Andrew McVeigh and David Barlow, who was the ex-professor in this department. With their support, I was able to do a PhD in this department, in this unit itself, supported by them and guided by them. I, I actually got a, a PhD from the University of Oxford. Um, definitely, this, this would be the, the best place I would recommend for people to come uh, because it it stimulates you to, to think, it also helps you to put 
the research in science into medical application so that it's not just in theory that you learn but also uh, to be able to put that into practice to help your patient. Many of the dedicated staff are attracted to the unit from all over the world. Embryologist Zia Hong comes from China. How long have you been doing it? Uh, 14 years. I think it's good. <laughs> this unit is uh, one of the best units, I think. Mm. I think it's very important is setting expectations for couples when they start IVF that um, we can certainly, by their age, give them an idea of what the success rates are. So, for example, for us at the moment, uh, if you're 35 or thereabouts, we would ex expect you to have approximately a 50 50 chance of getting pregnant. But that means that 50% of people won't get pregnant, and we have to manage that very carefully. So, it's setting those expectations right, and it's very difficult. Of course, we want patients to be optimistic and to be looking with enthusiasm towards a pregnancy test and it's all going to work but they've also got to keep their feet grounded and think of this as perhaps one or two treatment cycles and not necessarily the first time it's going to work. So uh, the main IVF unit is obviously here in, uh, in Oxford or the eastern part of Oxford but we also have some satellite clinics. Uh, currently these are clinics in um, Swindon, Reading and Cheltenham and there are others as well coming online. What it means is it certainly simplifies the treatment logistically for couples who live in those satellite areas, just not having to travel back and forth to Oxford the whole time. I think undoubtedly we are, it sounds big headed, but I think we are certainly a, a centre of excellence. We consistently have high success rates here, um, amongst some of the highest in the country. But in addition to that, we have a very active research programme. Uh, and I think many couples like to come to a centre that they feel is involved in research and that the couple are invited to be involved in research. I think without doubt that is our strongest point here in Oxford, our team. Uh, and we are genuinely a, a team. Our nurses have quite an advanced role. They build up very close relationships with uh, patients um, and they go through the emotional roller coaster the same way as the patients will do. Um, and, and patients will certainly build up a relationship with one or two of the nurses. And um, from a medical point of view, from doctors, there's always a consultant available here, either myself or my colleague Tim Child. We're here all the time. So we're available to see uh, the patients at any time if, if they so wish. But having that team approach and the, the couple knowing and uh, getting to know the, the team is, is very important. So from our point of view to be seeing embryos at a very very early stage in their life to being a fully formed baby nine months later is uh, always quite, quite an amazing thing really that they do develop from such a tiny bunch of cells to a fully formed human being. So um, the Oxford Fertility Unit within the uh, Institute of Reproductive Sciences is a world-class uh, reproductive medicine unit. We offer all of the most up-to-date assisted conception treatments here in a very friendly uh, surroundings with very friendly, highly qualified staff offering some of the highest success rates in the UK.